God, what a game this should be. I, it really is. And, you know, ordinarily you'd look at this and say, you know, these two teams are neck and neck for the title. Obviously, they'll prioritize that over the Coppa Italia. But it's been made pretty clear, certainly on Inter's part. Conte has talked about how he's not going to rotate the squad. He wants to put out his strongest 11. He wants to give uh, the guys who, who played so well against Juventus a week ago and then played so poorly at the weekend uh, against uh, Udinese, he wants to give them a chance to redeem themselves, kind of one of those, like, show us who you really are type uh, mm -hmm. uh, trope, which, you know, obviously Conte being a macho man, he's really into that stuff. Um, I don't know if he's actually going to do it, but I would expect uh, most of the team to really be his best 11. Um, and for Milan, there's some interesting conundrums. You know, uh, Slatan Ibrahimovic coming out uh, after uh, the, the game at the weekend uh, the, the, where they lost against Atalanta talking about how this team needs, needs more experience, how he felt a little bit uh, isolated up front, how things were a little bit fragile. And to be fair to Milan, they had a bunch of injuries. But a lot of people are reading, reading that as a signal. Ooh, could we get to see Ibra alongside Mario Mandzukic? And, you know, what would be, what, like a combined age of 73, <laughs> 74, something like that. But obviously, two big men, very experienced, and two real handfuls for Inter's three-man defense. Gab, having said all of that, who's under more pressure than going into this tie? I think Inter are most definitely under under how, uh, more pressure right now, mostly because there's no pressure like the pressure that Conte puts on himself uh, and, of course, on his players to perform. Milan are kind of playing with house money at this stage. You know, that nobody expected them to be leading the league at this stage of the season. You know, you, they would have been happy with, with sort of being competing uh, in the top four, especially with all the injuries, of course, that they've had. Mm. Uh, whereas for Inter, they're out of the Europa League as well. If you want, um, this is their... Europa League, the Coppa Italia. There's no reason why they shouldn't, you know, try to compete to go all the way in this competition as well as Serie A. So, um, plus, of course, they have Conte, who effectively laid down a marker to his players, challenging them to, sh to just show them that the real Inter was the one we saw against Juve and not the one we saw against Udinese. So that game live tomorrow, 2:45 Eastern on ESPN Plus. Meanwhile, reflecting. On that win for Juventus at the weekend, it's Weston McKenney who is at front page of Tutu Sport. Uh, lots of people very impressed with the young American after making that move. Front page of Scudetto going with uh, Scudetto Wizard after, of course, his celebrations. And it turns out he's a big Harry Potter fan, uh, dedicating it to, uh, well, not dedicated to Harry Potter, but certainly a tribute to him. Uh, this is what Arthur had to say. He has surprised me a lot. He's an extremely intense player. He's always running all over the pitch and he helps defensively too. But he also scores a lot of goals, important ones from midfielder. He's a very, very good midfielder and one of the best. Quite a statement, Gavin. He's not the only one who's saying these sort of things. No, and I think, you know, I, more than anything else, what, what has impressed uh, Juventus and, and, and Pirlo's coaching staff, um, you know, isn't the intensity and the work rate and whatever, because, you know, you kind of expected that. He's coming from the Bundesliga as an American player. It's the fact that he he's so smart is the fact that his decision making is the fact that he understood sort of Pilo's tactical playbook from day one uh, unlike some of his other fellow midfielders including Arthur I might add um, and he gets it he his, his decision making on the pitch his intelligence with his movements uh, he understands what Pilo wants and he understands it straight away and you know for for a manager like that that's got to balance egos and big names in the team and whatever having a guy who puts so, so team oriented and, and, and who is so quick to understand what the manager wants, to go and fill holes, to go and make runs in certain positions. I mean, that's gold. That's almost as valuable as, as having, you know, a big name signing like Federico Chiesa or whatever in your side. Uh, so there's no question. I think Weston McKinney has settled uh, better than anybody would have expected. The tone of it, Gab, seems to be that it's that he's breaking some sort of stereotype that Americans aren't tactically adapt. I don't think it's Americans so much. Um, I think it's more, you know, the fact that in Italy we have this idea that, that, that our football is so tactically sophisticated that it takes people time to settle. And remember, he came from Schalke, uh, which is a team that played a very different football from, from the type of football that... Uh, that Pilo wanted to do. Um, also, there is a perception, an incorrect one, I, I might add, 
that, um, you know, in Germany, uh, yes, there is more of a focus on tactical balance, uh, but a lot of it is pressing high up the pitch, doing a lot of, uh, doing a lot of things that, that we in Italy would consider unnecessarily risky. Again, I'm speaking in very broad uh, stereotypes and that in any case, it would be a huge adjustment for him uh, coming to a different league where he'd be required to do different things. Instead, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know Weston McKinney uh, well enough to be able to answer this, but uh, the guy is obviously the kind of person that, you know, the more you put him uh, in, in, in front of a whiteboard uh, and show him movements and with indexes and O's, you know, the more he absorbs it and the more he gets it. Uh, he's obviously a very, very clever guy. And I think that is really what has impressed Juve more than anything else. Gab Marconi, as always, thank you very much. If you want Gab's thoughts, by the way, on the Frank Lampard sacking, be sure to check out the latest edition of the Gab and Jules podcast, which is available now. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.